Hosea or Hosea? Hosea. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for who you are, what you do, Lord. God, and I pray that you will speak to us through your word, that we will stand with respect in that what you have for us, that we can take what you want to impart in our lives today. We honor you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. When we look at the book Hosea, we're talking about the prophet showing, showing the nation with God, saying that you're supposed to be my wife. I'm, I'm and I, your husband. In a passionate, intimate love relationship. But that's not the case. So we're going to look at a few principles, if you can please go with me. I would call this the words in your marriage with God. The words in your marriage with God. And where the words is the essence of of intimacy. Words as the incorruptible seed, Jesus Christ. The word of God is the incorruptible seed, according to 1 Peter 1 verse 23. 1 Peter 1 verse 23, the word as the incorruptible seed. But then we have contaminated seed. And that is for me and you in our relationship with God, we receive the seed of his word in our lives from a place of intimacy. But then he's talking about the wife treating herself and, and acting like a prostitute, like a harlot, like a, what you call it? A loose woman, loose lady. Yeah. Why? And that will be us in the case of where we believe whatever. When we, when we can receive whatever word in our heart and make it part of our lives. And that, that word can be fruitful in me. Like a seed that is in a womb that will be fruitful and it will bring forth. So seed, we see, will have a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. But seed will grow. Words in you will grow. Doesn't matter what, it will grow. So you will have contaminated seed. You will have a lot of weeds, not to smoke, but um, that will come up to make sure that the true harvest will not be there. Hello? But it all depends. If you will flirt with darkness, or if you will be a faithful wife, for us to be faithful towards him. Like we said in the past, that means I cannot just think what I want. I cannot just have my opinions in my heart and then just say, put a God in front of your mouth. No, first of all, God, your heart. You cannot just think what you want and then say nothing. In many ways, that's, you learn how to be a fake. When it comes up in your heart, then you make sure that you arrest, arrest, arrest those thoughts and say, yay, I will not flirt with a lot of rubbish. Because words, in a lot of ways, is a substance of intimacy, if I can say like that. A substance of true intimacy between you and your God. So, about all the words and all the rubbish happening with that. We look the first point at chapter 2, verse 2. Rebuke your mother. Rebuke her. Mm. In other translations, it talks about plead with her. Confront her. That sounds cheeky. Rebuke your mother. Rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her remove the adulterous look from her face and the unfaithfulness from between her breasts. What are we talking about, first of all? A lot of things are said. A lot of seed, contaminated seed, through words, through things happening. And God says, use your words and bring order. Bring order. Bring order into your life that you cannot just flirt with whoever. 
You stand as a faithful wife of one husband, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen? So when you are busy with the word of God, you are faithful in that. But we, even when we sit here, even when you are alone with God, when you alone with the word of God, how you handle this word. It's how you will learn how to be arrogant with God. How to flirt with other spirits. How to flirt into adultery. By what? That while I'm busy with his word, and it's supposed to be intimacy, my heart is here, my head is there, I'm busy on my phone. Sometimes when I see that, I just <laughs> feel this thing in my heart of, yeah, Lord, that man, that woman, I bless them. Let them please go out of the meeting because they are teaching themselves how to be so intensely arrogant that when I hear the word, I'm busy with other stuff. In the context of a place of intimacy with the word, but I'm intimate with other things at the same time. But we don't realize that. But God must teach us that. God must arrest our focus that we know that when we are busy with the word, there's respect. You know, in that sense, with all the older generation, we can say they were a lot in religion and a lot in this, but they had, in a certain sense, they had a major respect for the word of God. I don't know if you remember that. But yeah, may God help us with that. There come a day that you will, there will be such a lot of things that will be feared out there. So many words from people will be feared, will be respected, will people be intimate with. Intimacy that with demonic forces don't have fellowship. Don't have fellowship. And the context is intimate fellowship with demons. How do you have intimate fellowship with demons? By hearing the words and you talking about it and talking the same talk and having that conversation. But you don't even know it's with that spirit. You think it's with yourself. You think it's you and your heart and your opinion. But you don't realize, like we said, I think last Sunday, there's always spirit involved. When you speak, there's always you and someone. It's always you and someone. It's never, never, never you alone. It's either you and the spirit of God or you and another spirit. And then the whole thing of today is, where will be your faithfulness? Will you be the wife of the one that's calling himself your husband? Or you, will you be an adulterous generation? And not adulterous because you will go out here and carfufle with someone. No, but you will sit here or tonight you will be with a word and your thoughts you are intimate with other stuff. Don't read the word. If you decide you're going to teach yourself how to just let your mind go wherever it wants to go. Let the fear of God come upon us. And you say, I have respect for my marriage. Respect your marriage. Respect your marriage with God. They say, I will my, respect my marriage with God. That means you are arrested when he speaks. You know, there's a lot of people, but there's only one that his words and his heart is so, so, so intensely precious to you. You have this real relationship. Then, whoever is here, you will not really look at them. You will always look beyond, look beyond until you look at, until you look at that what is the most precious to you. So if you will even look beyond God if the stuff that you pray for, that is the ultimate. You will look beyond God until you look at the solution, until you look at the answer. Instead of look beyond until you look at Him. Because you have a marriage with Him. You don't have a marriage with answers, with religious answers. You don't have a marriage... And have intimacy with knowing all the stuff that you don't understand. But this is how we can flirt and go beyond the place of intimacy with him. 
when he's there, but I walk past him and, and I expect him to come wherever I go. May God help you. May God help me. Rebuke your mother. Bring things in order. Bring the words. Bring the flirting of all over the place. Bring order to that. Confront it in your life. From your spirit. Confront it. That you will not flirt to think whatever you want about people. Even in a religious context. You with me? Hello. Then, second one. Chapter 2, verse 14 and 16. Therefore, I am now going to allure her. I will call her aside in love. That is the allure. <laughs> that word. I will call her aside in my love. I will attract her with who I am. I will be attractive to her. I will present myself in who I am. And if I present myself in who I am, she will find me attractive. She will be attracted to me. She will be arrested by my beauty. She will be arrested by who I am. How? Therefore, I will now, I am now going to alert her. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak, speak, talking about words, speak tenderly to her. Other translations, I will speak love. I will speak in love. I will speak with compassion. You will lead her into the wilderness, into the desert. Why? So that you can have a hard time. No, lead her into a place where there's not all these other temptations. What's the major temptations in the desert? Hello. <laughs> Make everything be nothing. Make everything be nothing around so that she can focus on me. Take her into the place where she's not attracted or tempted with the stuff around her so that she can have the capacity to focus on me. So our desert seasons, so many times, God can put you in a desert season. Why? Because he wants to speak to you tenderly in his love to address certain things. And he's taking, want to take the other temptations away. So when it's rough in your life and things are happening, it's because God wants you to cry out to him. And he wants to speak as a father in love. He wants to speak as the husband to a wife. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. Verse 16, in that day, declares the Lord, I will call, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master or Baal. You will not call that what is idols. But I will be your husband, me and me alone. It's not like we say, I'm calling all these other bars my husband. I'm calling them all these other stuffs. No, that's not your decision. But that's how I can live. The one that you, you are the most intimate with is supposed to be your husband. And the other's not a little bit less intimate and a little bit less intimate and a little bit less intimate with other ladies. Sure. Rubbish. He's one and he's one alone. Amen. Amen. So God says it's me. And if this relationship is pure, and when I speak to you the words of intimacy, and you are attracted with, to, my, to me through my words and to that what I bring to you, you receive that so that you can conceive because the seed is growing in you. But seed will grow. Words will always grow in you. Contaminated seed. So that rubbish, you will give birth to whatever. Or the seed of the word of God will grow in you. Taking you to the wilderness. Taking you aside in his love. So that tenderly he wants to deal with you. But when you, we look at the desert around us, we feel there's no tender love from God. 
And God wants to do the desert is he wants to, to, like a father would take a son or a, or a daughter when they are small especially and take them on their cheeks and say, look at me. So the desert so many times is God saying, look at me. Are you with me? So allow God to do that. Don't go in a tantrum. Don't look at the circumstances, but look at me. It's me and you. I've taken the other things away. By my grace, I've taken it away. Because you have given them voices. Are you with me? Or call me my husband. Let it be so in Jesus' name. That is the second one, third one, chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. I will betroth you to me. Betroth is I will have this eternal commitment to you. I will have this eternal commitment to you. Jij is verloof. Wat is verloof in Engels? Engaged. Engaged into marriage. You to me forever. I will be betrothed or betrothed. I said so. Yeah. <laughs> I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion, in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. I will betroth you in righteousness. What is it saying? In this relationship, there will be order. Righteousness is a right standing with God. There's certain protocol. In our marriage, there's certain things that's not on, and there's certain things that's yes. But other things, it's just 100% no, no. So I will come to you, and I will give my everything to you in marriage. But it will be according to my order, according to my standards for marriage. That is, I will come to you and marry you in righteousness and justice. In love and compassion, there will be a passion. There will be a passion in this relationship, but according to a certain order. But the love will be pure. It will not be polluted. It will not be selfish. Amen? But with compassion. Because God knows it's not like we just living the right lifestyle always. So in righteousness, he will come. He will set the standard. and The standard is high. But through his blood, through his grace, through his name, he's giving us the capacity and he's with us. He has compassion on us for that what you're going through, for that in circumstances, what you can go through. His heart is with you. Are you with me? I will betroth you in faithfulness. That means I will always be there and you will acknowledge the Lord. I will betroth you in faithfulness. That means there's security, you know. God will be faithful even though you're not faithful. He will still be there. He will still be there. But you will only have intimacy if you turn and do it according to his pattern. He doesn't want to spite you, but he cannot do it in the place of darkness and sin. He cannot do it. He cannot go beyond who he is. He cannot change himself that now he's not love. Now that he's not holy, he's not a consuming fire anymore. So you have, want to have that relationship. It's that standard where he is. That's it. Me and you, we need to change and not him. But he gives us through his blood the capacity to change. Amen. In that day, I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond. Okay, that's going into verse 21. Okay, you with me? Let me go. Chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of the Lord of your God, I will also ignore your children. I will ignore the fruit of what you bring forth because it's not from me. How can I take that what is not from me, that what is sin, that what is flesh, that what is destructive? How can I take that? So what is it saying? If you don't know a lot of the Bible, God's going to reject you because you have a lack of knowledge. No, 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 no. 
this knowledge is talking about the intimate relationship. You know Jacob Zuma, you know uh, the man on the moon, you know your wife, but really you know them in quite different ways. This knowing is an intimate knowing like a husband and a wife. And it says, my people are destroyed from lack of intimate, intimate knowing me. They can know the Bible. They can know the law. They can know the words. They can know the letter of the law. They could maybe even recite the whole Bible, the whole five books of, from Moses. But they are destroying themselves because it's not in the context of an intimate, alive life relationship. So if I don't take this word in the context, if I don't take my whole life in the context of a relationship, of knowing him, I'm destroying myself. I can be his child, but still destroy, destroy myself because I'm not walking in this living relationship with Christ. And then I don't know why certain things are happening in my life. God's going to work or distraction's going to work. You choose who's going to work. Oh, let us not fool ourselves. Amen. But there where you sit and you're intimate with your thoughts and you took offense because somebody said something or they were not nice with you or they talked behind your back or they were rude and whatever. Then you decide, I replace my intimate relationship with God to flirt like an adulterous woman with all these other thoughts, with all these other words. Why? Why will you destroy yourself? It's not worth it. That situation, for you to be right and that person to be wrong, and he must know he's wrong and that you are right. And if it's not deal, dealt with that, if I cannot speak my mind with that person and settle the thing, then I still have this issue. Okay, but who's God in your life? Because it's not God. It's definitely not God. Because unless God is not there with you anymore, and only the devil. And only God's going to come when I will speak to Carmen and I have this issue with Carmen. Because she was wrong. And she hurt me. She disappointed me. Now I have this issue until we spoke. I have this issue in God. You don't have the right to expect a relationship with me. You don't have the right to have an intimate relationship with me, I will ignore you and what you say and what your words is until I've dealt in this situation with Carmen. What level of arrogance? But I can make right with God. I can set my heart in the right way. So that when we speak, is that so that our relationship will honor God more. And so that they can see that we are his disciples in the way that we love one another, forgive one another, give grace to one another. Why will I? Because I want to have this major relationship with Carmen. Not necessarily. But first of all, because I honor him and I respect my relationship with him. That you are his wife. He's your husband. And in that marriage, you will be faithful. That relationship is precious to you. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge because you have rejected this intimate knowing of me, this knowledge. I also reject you as my priests. Why? Priests rejected you as priests. Priest is who? Who are they? They that can come into the presence of God, see him. Those who can be intimate with him. Those who can stand in his presence. God is saying, you will have no right to come before me if you're not willing to live according to my pattern. If you're not embrace, embracing the word as the essence, the substance for intimacy between me and you. I reject you. What is it saying? What is it saying? It's, you have no right to come into my presence and have an intimate conversation with me and have an intimate relationship with me. Hello? 
Because what you will do, you will do with respect. You will do it in the fear of the Lord. When we will have this relationship, it will be because it's precious to you. Because I have a certain standard, and that is that our relationship will be precious. It will be accurate. It, there will be a certain protocol. It will, there will be a certain level of excellence. Excellence. Not cheap. No cheap relationship. But in my presence, you can come. And we can have intimacy with excellence in it. Beautiful Holy, like nothing else. Amen. God is calling this nation because he has a passionate love for them. I also will reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your children. Because you have ignored the patterns. The law of your God is the patterns set out for you. Because you have ignored the patterns, how you're supposed to live as my wife. A married lady would live, will live in a certain way. Are you with me? Not that a person that's not married can live in whatever way. <laughs> but I'm saying there's a certain pattern, there's a certain behavior, there's a certain, certain honor, there's a certain faithfulness. Because you've rejected my pattern, I cannot identify with your offspring. With what you will produce from your level of intimacy, of flirting wherever, doing whatever. Whatever is the fruit of your labor, whatever is the fruit of your relationships. I cannot identify with that. That's where he says, I will also ignore your children. God's going to help us, amen. We go on. Next point. Chapter 5, verse 15. Then I will return to my liar until they have borne their guilt and seek my face. What must they do? They must come and with words and with their lives say, I am sorry, Lord, I return. I repent. So I will not walk away and, and reject them that they will never be able to come back to me. I am faithful. I will be there. So that the day when they return to me, I will be there immediately. And that they will seek my face. They will earnestly seek me. They will have an intense focus on me. That's like we said among the group. I'm seeking something. And there's such an intensity in what I seek. I look beyond. I look beyond. To seek God means I look beyond everything until I find the one that's him. But I'm just asking. If you don't know through the word of God how he looks. <laughs> for what are you looking? The word describes him. The one. The living word. This word is describing your lover, your husband, your king, your master, the lover of your soul. If you cannot get a description and know the description of how he looks, how, how can you look for him? How can you seek his face? You can seek answers. You seek an answer. And to use him, you're looking for an answer. You're not looking for him. But if you want to seek him and seek his face, get the description of how he looks. <laughs> Otherwise, what are you doing? Chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. What are you talking to one another? We're talking about words in your relationship with one another. May your words always encourage the other person to have more of God. To return more to him. Now when we are in the flesh. And we have such a lot of intimate voices. We're flirting with other stuff. Then when somebody would tell you to come. We just see it as condemnation. We see it as religion. We see it as the law. We see it as he's judging me. He's criticizing me. He's putting this thing on me. I'm free. Yes you are free to flirt. And to have an adulterous life. 
or you decide, I will not take that as freedom. That's not my definition as f- for freedom. The guy out there says, I, c- I cannot just be bound to one wife. I, I'm free to go full with whoever. That guy is so deceived and so bound. Hello? By some other demonic voice that has no compassion, no love for that person. One agenda to destroy that person. Are you with me? I believe so. Earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord. Verse 3. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on. Press on. This press on is uh, you give yourself intensely. Be zealous. Focus. Press on to acknowledge him. If you need to press on. When do you say, when do you need to encourage somebody to press on? It's when they are tired in doing that. When they feel, oh. Then you tell him, now come on, come on, press on. Press on. So what is the word saying? Sometimes you will not feel, you will not feel that, have that feeling of, yes, I want to. You must first be encouraged to get into the word, yes. No. When you don't feel like getting into the word, when you don't feel like making the right decision, we have the word saying, press on, press on, because you are married, because you are faithful. You will not flirt. You are faithful. Let's say, I am faithful. I will not flirt. With all the other stuff. No, I'm just honest. Okay. In the name of honesty, you can flirt with whatever thoughts. And bring that thoughts and put it out there and then discuss it. You mustn't be fake. No. It must be honesty. It mustn't be fake. But with what you put on the table. You say, that what is not from God. You must go. This is not part of the marriage. I see God's principles. And I will live according to his standard for marriage. Amen. Okay, we go to verse 6. Hosea 6, verse 6. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. From other translation, talking about I desire love, I desire goodness, I desire mercy, I desire knowledge, I desire acquaintance, to be acquainted with him. In knowing him. That's what I desire. Not sacrifice. Not the burnt offerings. What is it saying? Guys, I can have my own lifestyle, doing my own thing, flirting with whatever, whatever. And whoever. And when I'm in the wrong, I can go, I bring the burnt offering. Sorry, Lord. Forgiven. And there I carry on. We call that a quick fix. God says, I'm not interested in a quick fix. In that burnt offering. In the burnt offering, I come, sorry Lord, and there I go, and I go back to my lifestyle. God says, I'm not interested in that quick fix. That is when he says, uh, for I desire not sacrifice, not offering, burnt offering. It's in the context of the Old Testament. No, quick fix. I desire that intimate love relationship where you know me and I know you. And when we speak, it's heart to heart. There's intimacy. You have that? Next point. We go to chapter 10, verse 12. Sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. Break up your up unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you that was the it's time event for it is time to seek the Lord where it comes from what is he saying so righteousness with your words with what you bring forth is it not life and death is in the power of the tongue those who use it will find you will reap its fruit Proverbs 18, 21. For those who don't know it yet, Proverbs 18, verse 21. So what you sow, you can sow death, you can sow destruction, and you will reap it. 
when you speak about people, when you speak about government, when you speak about these guys, about those guys, you sow. You know, before it will fall in their lives, it comes back to you as a harvest of destruction. You sow that judgment. You sow that death. That w those words of death. Destructive words. Before that person is influenced, you will reap, you will reap destruction. May God help you. That what you sow, you will reap. It's not first, Kieran's going to reap what I sow into his life. No, that's not the first. I'm the first to reap what I've sown in his life. With what I say about him, how I judge him, how I criticize him, how the level of grace that I give him. Lord, forgive me. How? In the way that I forgive him. In that way, do to me. How I sow forgiveness in that way. The prayer says, in the way that I sow forgiveness, Lord, in that same way, forgive me. Forgive me as I also forgive. No. Sow righteousness. What's righteousness again? The right way. The right that you have before God. That's only through Christ. Sow in the right way. In God's way, according to his pattern. Not so like the parable of a sower. Not just sowing and it's on the, on, on, the, on the tar road or the gravel road or what road. But it's on the road. And it's just gone. Pew! It's there but nothing happened to it. You hear the word today. You hear the word tonight when you're busy with the word. You hear it but it's gone. It's in and out. No, no, no. You cannot go with that. You cannot sow in that way. Because you sow by Choosing to read the word, you sow, and first of all, you sow into your own life. Sow righteousness. Sow the, in the right way. You cannot just be out there, because that's flirting. That's adulterous nation. I can just hear what I want. I can say what I want. I can say in my heart what I want. I can, I can reason the way that I want. Now, you have no right to do that. If you are a faithful bride, if you're a faithful wife to the man in your life, you have no right for that. The fear of God be on you so that what you sow, what's coming forth from you, not on the road, it's cheap, it's cheap, it's there and then it's gone. Your word has no meaning. It's just there. So among the thorns, yes, you're excited, but then all the other voices, Suffocate that what God said is gone. Because the other voices, like all the weeds and all those rubbish, it's just there and oh, don't worry, suffocate it. It's gone. Oh, among the rocks, there's such a lot of hardened hearts. There's such a lot of opinions. There's lots of, lots of strong personalities and such a lot of. Uh, it has no meaning. No, so accurately. So that means you press on until there's good ground because you respect the seed. The seed is not to be wasted. If you know that you have quality seed, you're not going to spill it all around. You're not going to waste it if you don't know I have absolutely the right ground for this absolute quality, quality, incorruptible seed. Hello? Hello? So if you have respect for the word, so righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. Reap in what way? God wants to bless you, man. In what way? In an unselfish love. Love is patient. Love is kind. No envying, of, not jealous of somebody else. No selfish agenda in the reaping. But that's a temptation. When you're getting, if God's blessing you, now the people are going to, now they're going to be friendly because they want something from me. And I, I get this authority over what I have. <laughs> when God blesses you. As if you have this authority, this right, this stature above the one that is poor. That's totally deception. Absolute deception. Are you with me? But if you reap 
in the fruit of unfailing love. That's where, the way that God wants to bless you. Where there's an unselfish love. Your success is not driving you. So you don't give your success a voice. You don't give all the blessings and all the finances, all the whatever God is giving you. It doesn't get a voice. But so many times it gets a voice. Oh, for the rich. It's so intense to enter the kingdom. So difficult. Because the, the riches get a voice. Even the rich young man. No, let it not be so in our lives. Amen? So if we do it in an accurate, proper way, with respect for God, the way that we sow and the way that we reap, we receive it in God's awesome, awesome, unselfish love. And he says, break up your unplowed ground. It means new fields. Get the breakthroughs. Get the breakthroughs in areas of your life so that there God's word can be sown. This ground unplowed you cannot sow you cannot put the word in there it's not going to grow nothing is going to change but say god do this thing please in my life you need to plow that because there's a lot of weeds there's a lot of stones there's a lot of rocks there's a lot of rubbish so i need to prepare the ground in this area of my life help me lord so that i can prepare the ground to receive from you because I will not receive any other seed. I'm married to you. And you alone. Amen. Are you still here? For it is time to seek the Lord. For it is time so that you will learn how to focus on him and him alone. Until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. His righteousness. His right standing. He showers it on you. That in your success you know how to position yourself right. In a rightful way. In your, in your failures, right position. He will shower down on you that you will just know how to position yourself in your success, in your failures, in your mistakes, in your strengths. In whatever you go through, you will know how to position yourself in every situation. If you understand how to seek him, he will let it shower down on you. You will just know how to position yourself correctly in every situation. Okay, that's that one. We go forth. Next one. Eleven verse one. One one one. Hosea eleven verse one. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. As a child, God will always love you. As a child, God will always love you. In spite of your mistakes. But as a son, that means as you mature, God believes you need to mature. And he's calling you out of darkness because he's calling you into maturity to become a son. Not just a child, immature child, not just a child with a lot of needs, but a son that says, what is the need of the father? Child, father says, what is the need of my child? Son, what is the need of my father? Hello? 1 Peter 2 verse 9. God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called you, you, child of God, with things that can bind you, where you can sit in bondage still as a child, but because you're his son, he says, deal with this stuff. Come out of darkness into the light. God calls we're talking about words, with words, with words, with words. He called him. Number nine, or ten. Oh. Chapter 14, we're going for a landing. Chapter 14. Return to the Lord God. Verse two. Take words with you and return to the Lord. What are we talking about? The whole chapter... The first major thing that God is saying, plead with your mother. Not tune your mother, but rebuke, confront. Deal with the words that's all over the place that's causing you to be an adulterous, adulterous generation. All this flirting, all the words that are contaminated and some pure, some contaminated. It's all over the place. Get order. 
And at the end of the day, if you understand all these principles, come to God. Take the words. Take the right words to God. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him. This is the right word. Say to him, forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer what? The fruit of our lips. The fruit of our lips. The offering. The fruit of our lips. What's that? Words with meaning. True, true words with meaning. That you may offer up. Offer up. That means it's an offering. An offering costs you something. It's not just naturally that you speak the right words. Naturally, when you're excited you, that you speak the word of God because you're excited about it. No. An offering on your left is something that you not necessarily want to do. It costs you something. I don't feel like it. But I still will take time with the word. Not because I'm under the law, feel condemned and all that rubbish. No. But you make it an offering. Are you with me? When you feel a lot of rubbish, you will speak truth. Not fake. You can be honest. But at the end of the day, you will see so many, so many, so many psalms from David. Yoch, man. It looks like he went through a lot of, lot of stuff in what he says. It sounds horrible, horrible, horrible. But at the end, still I will trust you. And I will this, you're my shield, you're my rock. And he's like, but what you told, said, all the things that you said now, there's no proof that God is that, or that you can even believe that God is that. But he ends off with truth. Are you with me? You can say what you want in a certain sense, but you arrest it and, and decide truth will reign. Truth. I will speak the truth, and the truth, at the end of the day, will have the final say. Amen. Take the words with you. Return to him. Say to him, forgive, receive us through your grace, and offer the fruit of your lips. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. You with me? Okay. Then we go to last one. Chapter 14, verse 8. The last part. I am like a flourishing juniper. Hmm. Your fruitfulness comes from me. God says, your fruitfulness comes from me. In principle, in the context of a few translations, it has to do with, I will allow you to find fruitfulness from me. From us in our intimate marriage, there will be a fruitfulness in you. And that fruitfulness will not be from all the other lovers. Will not be from all the flirting with a lot of chamors. And the flirting with what you keep in your heart, with the words you keep in your heart, the things that you believe, the struggles in what you think and say and your reasoning and all that. It will not be that anymore. But as you deal with these things and as you return to me and as you take the accurate words and come in right standing in a proper way according to my standards for a holy, excellent, excellent marriage. What you will do, what you will receive from me as your God, my promise to you is what will come forth from your life will be from me. It will be from me. Your fruitfulness will be from me. God, come and do that in our lives, please. We need you for that. Forgive us for flirting with, with other, so many other words and so many other stuff, so many other situations, Lord, and allowing you to get a voice and that through those words being contaminated. Forgive us. We want to deal with that, God, and I pray for every man, woman here in the name of Jesus Christ for words that brought contamination in their hearts, brought bitterness, resentment, or hardness of heart, or judgment, or criticism, or all kinds of temptations and lies, deception. We break this morning with that in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us the process, show us the process, that we will stand against it, that we will challenge those things in our lives. 
God, so that we can come through your blood, through your mercy, into a holy living, a holy lifestyle with you and you alone. We trust you for that. I pray that for every man, every woman here. God, so that we can understand even the seasons going through the wilderness, going through the desert, Lord, that we will know that you are just saying, look at me, hear my heart, as you come and speak tenderly to us when we go through the desert. Thank you, Lord, that you come and do that for us and do it in our lives. Holy Spirit, give us the proper words to declare our destiny with Christ. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen. Let it be so.